Um, and I live here at Grand Marais, Minnesota on a small farm. I also run cross country and I'm on the cross country skiing team. And I'm also a local vet tech and I'm a chicken whisperer. I am Naomi. I'm 15. I live a mile out of town. I live a mile out of town and I also love to be. Hi, uh, my name is Kat Mayo. Um, I'm the Cook County Local Energy Project Coordinator. Uh, I am new to Minnesota and the Grand Rapids community. So thank you for allowing me to be part of this wonderful tribe you guys have up here. I am honored. Uh, yeah, I'll just begin to tell you a little about C Club. So C Club is short for Cook County Local Energy Project. Um, we are a local nonprofit based out of Grand Marais. Um, we uh, aim to guide com the community away from our dependence on fossil fuel fuels and towards energy freedom, energy efficiency, climate solutions, and renewable energy solutions for Cook County. So our C Club programs um, are solar solution resources for residents and commercial businesses, along with community education, like what we're doing right now, um, energy efficiency, home weatherization, uh, beneficial electrification, and workforce demo, uh, development for the community. All right, so we are now going to get into a little bit of what Naomi and I have done. Um, so as a couple of you may know, um, when we were both 10 and 11, we got a climate inheritance resolution passed in Grand Marais that committed the city to drafting a plan that got them to no that will get them carbon neutral by 2040. Um, and then we helped draft and pass that climate action plan. Uh, recently, in January, we passed the climate emergency resolution in Grand Marais. And then in February, we passed a very similar resolution here in Cook County. Uh, so now we're going to dig into climate emergency resolutions, which is the topic of today, and the what and why about them. Yeah. So the first common question about climate emergency resolutions is why? Why climate emergency? It seems like such a dramatic term. Like why not just a climate resolution? Why is it suddenly an emergency now? So up here, we have our nice little graph um, of carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere um, over time, all of the worldwide most relevant seasons mapped out. So we can see that we've been making progress with the Kyoto Protocol. Uh, the Copenhagen Conference and the Paris Agreement, but we can also see that what we've been doing has not been enough. Um, what we've been doing has been great, but it's not been enough. So the consequences are in action are catch up to us. And these graphs from climate.gov clearly show that we're looking at Arctic sea ice and mountain glaciers. Sea level and temperature is rising, spring snow is vanishing, incoming sunlight is becoming more erratic, global surface temperatures are skyrocketing. So these graphs actually provide a really great counter to a common misconception, which is climate versus weather. I mean, if you look around us, it does not look like we're in the midst of a climate crisis. There's snow on Earth Day. <laughs> um, but the important thing to look at at climate versus weather is making sure that you're looking at trends over time instead of yearly fluctuations. So just because it's cold one winter and warm another does not mean that there's no climate change because climate naturally warms and cools, but the graph of the averages is that, that, that climate rapidly. Um, and that is also linked to another misconception, which is the idea of global warming. Um, the climate is changing. That means a change in weather patterns. The Earth is warming overall, but that doesn't mean it's warming everywhere. Climate change might mean that it gets colder in some places. Take your point, Texas got a whole bunch of snow last year because climate change slowed down the jet stream. And uh, that was supposed to act as a barrier to stop the polar vortex from coming down. So that's an example of climate change actually causing colder temperatures, but still being a huge problem. Up north, we also have droughts in the summer, elongated springs, warmer water temperatures, and we can get these here just different weather-induced changes. But the ticket is when you look at the trends, the worldwide averages, even at just the averages in Cook County, the trends show that the planet is warming and changing. This is why we need a climate emergency. What we've done is not enough. 
And in light of the recent IPCC report, we have reached the next stage of climate crisis. The consequences of our actions are becoming grave enough that it absolutely justifies the use of the term emergency. So our next question is what is a climate crisis? And like all resolutions, there's essentially two parts to it. The first part of the resolution says the reasons for passing it. And the second part is basically the actual resolution saying what we're going to do about it. So now we're going to walk through um, these two parts in Cook County's climate emergency resolution that they just recently passed. So the first reason to pass a climate emergency resolution that was in the resolution was that one of the worst parts of the climate crisis is that those who are causing it are not always the same people who are going to suffer the most from it. The politicians that are not taking action are, for the most part, older and financially better off, but marginalized communities and the younger generation, like us, are going to have to take the brunt of the effects of climate change. A rest weather, desertification, ecosystem collapse, and a perpetuated policy extinction. So these consequences of inaction are becoming stronger every year, but nothing is done. We're feeling it in Minnesota. The 10 warmest winters, warmest and wettest years ever recorded have all occurred since 1998. Warming lakes are leading to fish declines and algae blooms, and ecosystems are fast sh shifting faster than local wildlife can keep up. These unpredictable changes are having a financial toll too. Toll insurance rates in Minnesota are rising far faster than the national average by almost $1,000 in only 17 years. Cook County is not exempt from Minnesota's drastic changes. In June, when we had a record heat wave, forest fires like those that ravaged the boundary waters last year are becoming more and more common, leading to dangerous air quality. There have been water restrictions from droughts and even a tornado. A tornado up here but doesn't really make sense. So we talked about a lack of action and how this has driven us uh, to occur in a state of emergency. A prime example in the Next Generation Energy Act that passed in 2007 that committed Minnesota to a 80% reduction in greenhouse gas uh, by 2050. Um, we as a state did not meet uh, this interim goal, so uh, we are not on track to meet the future one. This plan is not aggressive enough. Uh, if we have been on track, it would have been a strong enough foundation for us to build modern legislation on road. We need action now. The Paris Agreement said that we have to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees from pre-industrial levels if we're going to escape essentially a, dom a domino effect of climatic collapse when we're already at 1.1. So this 1.1 degrees of warming has already had enough of a toll. The extreme weather effects resulting from climate change has led to the extinction of so many plants and animals that scientists have designated it as the sixth mass extinction. The Holocene extinction. The 500 vertebrate species that have gone extinct over the past 100 years would have taken 10,000 years at the normal rate. And this rapid biodiversity loss is seriously threatening our planet's delicate ecosystem, which is essential for our survival. Case in point, bees are vital for agriculture. A stable ecosystem is essential for disease control, etc. In, uh, in the report in 2021, the Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change, IPCC, it is one, humans are responsible for the changes in the atmosphere and land. Basically, we're responsible for climate change beyond a doubt. Uh, two, that this human cause of warming has accelerated at an unprecedented rate. And three, every additional increase to greenhouse gas and emission of CO2 has an exponential effect on the already warming climate. To limit <clears throat> temperature increase, to 1.5 degrees Celsius, we must have worldwide CO2 emissions by 2030 and reach net zero emissions by 2050. We need a transition and we need it now. However, a shoddy transition would be horrible for our community and our economy. Well, a well done one would be extremely beneficial to help rein in climate change and create jobs. So thousands of other jurisdictions agree. In fact, 2000 and 94 local, county, state, and federal governments in 38 countries have declared a climate emergency. And the populations covered by these governmental bodies that have declared a climate emergency now amount to over 1 billion citizens. Mm -hmm. These jurisdictions include 16 cities and one county in our state alone, including Duluth, Minneapolis.
Minneapolis and Grand Moraine. So now on to the second part of the resolution. What are we going to do about it? Well, the first thing we need to do is acknowledge it. Declaring a climate emergency is kind of like declaring a natural, a natural disaster emergency. It's drawing attention and acknowledging the fact that humanity has essentially dug itself in a hole. So of course, just declaring an emergency isn't enough. In an actual disaster situation, you just don't look at the destruction and say, oh, yeah, that's a disaster, and walk away. You have to do something about it. Um, this is why Cook County has committed to transitioning to a more sustainable economy by encouraging CCLEP and other organizations to propose and implement something like a climate action plan um, by making county buildings more efficient, by using electric vehicles in the county fleet whenever possible, and by taking advantage of state and federal climate funding. But, you know, we can only do so much in Cook County, uh, though we can do much more than we are already doing now. Uh, so it is essential that the state of Minnesota takes immediate and aggressive action to support cities and counties like us, um, fund the writing and implementation of climate action plans, and help adapt and mitigate the efforts of climate change now. I mean, it's, we got to do it. Yeah, start. So, Finally, the last part of the resolution is that Cook County pressures the federal government to support cities and counties in climate action and to lead globally to keep to the IPCC a critical threshold of 1.5 degrees Celsius before it's too late. All right, so now that was a paraphrased version of Cook County's climate emergency resolution. And we are now looking at a map of Minnesota and the locations where climate emergency resolutions have passed. Pretty great, right? All right, now this is an overview of North America. Green is cities or counties or provinces of Canada, and orange is the United States. And finally, the whole world. Um, but whose responsibility is it to pass all of these thousands of resolutions? And it's really everyone's to an extent. There are always these people who don't think anything they do will make a difference, and they won't make any attempt to be sustainable. So policy is necessary. The truth is that climate change has been put on our shoulders by the corporations. 71% of greenhouse gas emissions are made by just 100 companies. And many of these same companies will tell you, reduce your footprint, be sustainable, and make us feel guilty for the crisis we're in. But we, the citizens, are only partially responsible for these emissions. Instead, we're part of a problematic <coughs> system. It's kind of like systemic racism, but systemic climate destruction. It's hard to go out and change the whole system. And this is why we need action at all levels of government, and we need it now. So what are the next steps? At the city and county level, we're looking at what action we can fuel with the climate emergency resolution, and how we can utilize the action that was implied in both resolutions. To reach these goals, as always, it's a matter of putting more pressure on the city and the county. Uh, what Uli and I are working on right now is a climate emergency resolution in Lake County in partnership with friends from the Two Harbors High School. So if you have any connections in Lake County, let us know. <laughs> It'd be very helpful. Great. So how can you help? There are a couple ways, of course, and you can take action in your own way. Um, obviously, you can electrify the stove, heating, cars, anything and everything. When you're transitioning, purchase an electric stove instead of a gas or an electric water heater instead of a propane. Of course, you can reduce waste. There are plenty of booths here of Brown and people to talk to with amazing creative ideas for plastic reduction. Um, you can also increase energy efficiency in everything you can do. Also, you can sign up for our mailing list so we can let you know about workshops and petitions. Um, and in addition to the personal action, you can take policy action. Passing the climate emergency resolution needs to happen in all communities. Just like Naomi and I working in Lake County and helping our friends down there work with this, you have friends, I'm sure, around the state, country, world, and help you can help them have high stresses in their own community. There's a super helpful link up here that has information about all high risk resolutions around the world, also the site where I got the maps from. Quite nice. Oh, yeah, all right. So Oli and I, we have a little joke about climate action. Every other month, we take turns getting overwhelmed by the things we have to do and essentially paralyze us while the other person fills in for us until they inevitably get overwhelmed and then we switch. For your information, we're both overwhelmed. <laughs> so we like to joke about this, but it's honestly kind of not that funny. We would love what 
we've been able to do in this community, and we've received incredible support and encouragement, but we also need everyone to do their part. So I'm not saying Naomi and I shouldn't be taking action, but we need everyone right now to double their efforts and act like this is an emergency, because, well, it is. So build momentum, encourage your friends, get resolutions passed, lobby, organize in your community. We've created this path of successful action for your, ourselves, and you can do the same. And that is what tonight is all about. Uh, every booth we've asked, including every presentation, we've asked every single person to have a call to action, have some homework for people to think about when they go home. Uh, just things, you know, behavioral changes people can consider, or, uh, you know, community service projects that we can all be a part of to jump on so we can feel like we're unifying as a community to be moving towards something positive for not only um, our future, but the next generation. We've had some really wonderful stewards of this land here. This is an incredible place to be from. Um, so we want to make sure we can keep sustaining that as long as possible. So, any questions? Oh, oh it's told way, way over there that you guys are thinking to like the people. Oh, sure. Here, can't you? Here. <laughs> but okay, with that said, do we have any questions? Go ahead. Is the county considering? Um, Purchasing electric vehicles in the near future? Have we talked to you about that? That's a great question. Um, we're going to have, we're gonna have uh, one of the county, the county administrators speak soon, so that's a good question to ask. I'm not sure about that. I believe the city has uh, been talking about it. I think that that may have been one of the actions. It is one. Of yeah, it's one of the actions. Uh, that we think about it. So what we're thinking of, obviously we can't have electric snow plows right now. It's not possible, but we can have electric fleet vehicles so as we can replace our fleet. Those are considerations we are making. Any other questions? Okay, thank you guys so much. Thank you everyone. Thank, thank you. you.